How's it going everybody? Josh KI6NAZ. Today we're going to breathe life into an old friend, the Shegu X5105. There's a pretty easy firmware install to do and a new menu system with new features that we're going to walk through right now. If you enjoy ham radio videos such as these, consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So on this firmware instruction and walkthrough for the Shegu GX5105, you're gonna to need to start with this off. You're gonna hold down the two buttons on top here, two volume buttons, and you're gonna connect power. What that does is it illuminates the data light. That means this is kind of in a terminal mode that you can connect to it via a serial adapter, kind of like this one. Now, you need this cable. Now, I know um, you might have gotten, so this is an older, this is one of the first models that MFJ came out with when they started reselling these for Shegu. Uh, they came with a black dongle. Uh, I had trouble with that black dongle. In fact, it ended up melting on me when I was doing digital one time. It actually melted like right here in the plastic. So I ended up getting one of these to replace it. Now, to do this, you need to have the radio on, right? Hold the two volume buttons and plug in the power. That's it, you don't touch this. Then you're gonna take this connector and it's gonna go into the sieve port. You need to push this in as hard as you can and make it seat all the way down. The first time I did it, I didn't push it in all the way and I wasn't able to get the terminal to acknowledge it. Once that's done, connect this to your computer. Hey everybody, here is my blank desktop. We're gonna do that flash. So you've got your X5105 connected to your computer via the USB dongle. You're gonna run something called Terra Term, a very simple application. We don't want TCP host, we want signal or serial. So we're gonna go down here. It's gonna li likely find the cable once you plug it in. Uh, at least it does for me. You're gonna click OK. Now here under your window, the actual terminal window, you're gonna click Setup. You're gonna go to, do, 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 do. I forgot. <laughs> Serial port. There. And you're gonna change this to 115200. Zero, zero. That's it. And you're gonna click new setting. Then hit space bar. That's it. Okay, and you're gonna hit one for update application. And while it's doing its thing, I already have the file that I've downloaded. You need to make sure you download that beforehand. I will put the link in the description for the download. And this is the file where I have it loaded. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go under file, you're gonna go to transfer, you're gonna go to X modem, and you're gonna go to send. And then you're gonna point it to the file, right? So I already have it loaded. Make sure it's the same one. It's gonna be the X5105 firmware, version three, build eight. You're gonna scroll down to this X5 app v3 build 08. Now, most important step before you click open, click the 5K or the 1K option, right? You need to have that. And if you don't, it's gonna go slow, but I've actually not been able to load the firmware twice by not having that selected. So then you do it and it should start going off on you. And that's it, you let it finish its job. At that point, you just need to disconnect the radio completely and power it back on. It'll have its own batteries charged likely by that point. Hopefully you can leave the power connected if you want. But I find removing the power, plugging it back in if you need that to get back to that charge screen is what you need to do. Now, if you didn't click that 1K, it would be it would be transferring at a much lower rate, less than uh, 8.7 as it's showing right now. KBPS. So make sure you click that. And now I'm just looking at the camera. Hey, hope this is working out for you. I hope you're having fun updating the firmware on your Shegu X5105. It's actually pretty, it's pretty easy to do. That uh, TerraTerm app software works just fine and it's been pretty easy. And it's done. Now, on mine, it's already rebooted and it put itself back into the charge mode. So it's taken itself out of that serial connect mode and put it back into regular operation charge mode where you plug it in and you can see the charge indicator on. So let's go take a look at what that's, that shows up when, you, when you're done. So we're done with the computer. You can go play radio now. All right, so the update's complete. 
it's taken itself out of that blue light mode for digital. It's gone back to this powering mode charging. You can disconnect the serial cable. You are done with that. You can leave the, the battery connector going if you need to charge it. This one's already pretty much topped off, so I'll just disconnect it now. Uh, and by the way, I would recommend disconnecting that regardless. Hold down power, and there you go. So you now have a updated firmware for your X5105. Let's take a look at the menus. Quick point too, watch the logo when it starts up. Oh, that's the startup button. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, when you set your call sign in here, it resets that for you. Key difference with the software is going to be on the GUI, the front end. It's significantly changed uh, in this new model. You can see the display readout on top is different. You have kind of a waterfall effect here or a pan adapter kind of display. And then the menus down at the bottom. In the past, you would click the menu button and you would scroll the wheel and it would change the bottom options. Now, you click the menu and it changes into different controls directly. So menu one, two, three, four, five, six, and then back to one. That's its primary main change is the look and feel, but there's obviously more to it than that. There's now a kind of increased sound platform. Um, I've noticed that the audio performance out of this is much better than it used to be, and I'm gonna demonstrate that. All right, I'm gonna change the mode back to single sideband. There's, uh, we are currently still in the CW contest, so I'm gonna get out of this frequency really fast here. It doesn't have a readout like it used to. But it does get quite loud. Actually, that's it right there. It's already maxed, so let's back this off a bit. So here's the volume readout. Oh, good. Let me get this salty guy. There's now an RF gain control. which is very nice. This guy's a major bummer. He's a pretty big jerk on the air, too, to people. So let's look at some of these menu options. AGC control. The RF gain control right here is fantastic. That's a much improved uh, feature to have right up front like that. And it, it sounds really good. Uh, adjusting, it's pretty simple. Click it, and then just scroll your gain. Um, so you can back this way down. Menu item two, DSP filtering is on. We can turn that off easy. Narrow uh, noise reducer, notch filter, EQ control, which I'm assuming you can set that. I wonder if I hold it down, does it do anything? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so this is where you can adjust your bass, mid, and treble. I'll leave it off for now. This is where you can have uh, a memory setting for what you want to be able to transmit, if you're going to do that. There's a message. You can load up messages if you want to do that. And there's your call sign if you need to enter that as well. This is your CW side, uh, menu four. I have it set to left side uh, paddle key. Your tone size, you can adjust that as you need to. It's set to 800 by default. QSK is uh, key on and off, and QSK is on or off, so we we'll leave that off for now. Five is where you get into the digital setting, and that's where you get in this uh, kind of this readout here. This allows you to change between things like RIDI, PSK31, PSK125, and CW. I'm doing CW decode right now. I was using, I was testing this out on the contest. Uh, not fantastic. In fact, let's um, let's go grab one of those CW stations we heard earlier. So it does give you these really nice, easy to read dis uh, displays so you can get right up on the station that you hear. 
And it, it is effective in that it will show you when you're, you're zero beating the station. There you go. So it starts to flash the data light when you're zero beating. Threshold button is how high the signal must be for it to trip before it starts trying to decode it. Tone is 800. Message, you can have a message slot, so you can fire that off if you want to. But I want to demonstrate this because uh, it, it is actually a cool feature if you can get it to work, but you generally need a pretty strong station. So we've got it on CW mode to get a bit tighter display. And we're on a 400 kilohertz wide filter now, 400 hertz wide uh, filter. There it is, hold on. Okay, so it's attempting to decode, but as you can see, it's just T's and E's and A's. So there's obviously something... So these are well-formed CW characters too, and, and they're not getting decode, decoded, but it, it does work. I mean, it, it is picking it up. It does know where zero beat on the station. But there's something else going on here, so I have a feeling I've got something else wrong. I will look into this more. Okay, so that's that. Okay, menu item six. Mic, it changes from the internal microphone, which is right there, to um, an external, internal, internal, and then there's auto. I have uh, done this multiple times where I've left it on internal speaker and tried to do an activation. Um, don't forget that's there, so I usually leave it on external. Speaker, you can have phone, speaker. If you have a key, uh, an actual uh, handy talkie mic. Uh, this is your line out and controls for that. This is where you would use for digital. Line in, line out, G line out, G in. And PTT normal, okay, get the idea. And then that takes you back. So. There's not a whole lot of features on the menu system anymore. It feels like they've reduced it, but, but actually it's, it's just a different way of aligning or, or coordinating where the data is. And, and by and large, it's, it's a pretty nicely done um, design, the way they went with this. It would be nice if you had some kind of waterfall like you do in the digital mode. So you can't really tell where the uh, signals are. You just have to kind of scroll around, even though you know you can go into the digital mode. And so now we can see. It would be nice if you could do that with single sideband with a wider filter turned on. I mean, you could widen the filter if you wanted to by putting it back into something like upper sideband or lower sideband. But just wish this performed better as a uh, as a CWD code. For comparison, let's uh, grab the KX2 and test it against its CWD code. Yes. Yes. Back to the... It just doesn't doesn't have it doesn't know what it's doing okay so what about the deeper menu let's see if that's changed not a lot of change it's the same format ooh ooh oh my what do you do when you set this? So let's do a full band. Oh, that's it. Just opens it right up, huh? 
Opens her right up there. Okay. Gives you the version and date. This is the uh, November 26, uh, 2019. That is the last version that I was able to find, the last stable version. So that's the one I installed. And I will post the link in the description for where you can find the tools uh, to do the load, which is something called TerraTerm and the version. So that's pretty much all there is to it. It still has all the capabilities. The front screen still works. So there's your preamp, attenuator, off. Uh, mode still changes the, the actual mode types. RIT, you don't really mess with RIT, but you can. Dual side, it's got an A and a B. Power output's five, no, that's it, five watts max still, they didn't change that. And ATU on and off, ATU shows a little uh, antenna logo, and if you hold it down, it'll tune. Very good. And of course, it has still its best feature, the SWR reader. Woo, there's our dip. Now, um, likely, if I do quit, turn off. So I have the tuner turned off now. Now let's see what the SWR curve looks like. Okay, so at 14, 0 0.34, it says I have an extremely um, low curve. Let's, let's hop up the band a little bit more, so let me get out of here. So not bad. You can see it's starting to, like, rise up right there. So... And if we were to tune on that, done. So, pretty easy. Now, if you have the tuner on and you do an SWR curve, it's going to be really flat. It's just going to look pretty pretty flat. See, it kind of lowered. This is the center, so it's going to make this a little bit lower, and then it's going to kind of let it go right here, and that's where it starts to pop up. I don't know what this is about right here. Let me get out of the tuner mode. Turn that off. Get back in the SWR. That's about what I expected. So that's from 13.705 megahertz all the way up to 14.775, if you can see that there. That's what that's displaying. So that's this is your bandwidth um, option to basically widen how big the space is. So if we're sitting on 14.02, we can maybe slide that. Hold on, let's do, can I slide it? No, I can't. I gotta get out of that. Go up to there and see if that changes it. Yeah, so it's always gonna. That's interesting. It it's gonna take whatever your center frequency is and start it off to that on one or left side. So it started at fourteen two zero five and it went up to fifteen point two seven five because we've got a center frequency of fourteen point seven four zero. That's still the best tool on this thing. This thing is still a, a pretty damn good SWR meter. I'm uh, I'm still a fan of that. So if we go back down, let's take it down to 100. Yeah, and you can see the dip in the antenna. The antenna kind of rides it out and then kind of comes back up. Great. And last but not least, the go bye bye button. Changed it a little bit. <laughs> and that's pretty much the walkthrough on the radio. It's a chunkus, still a chunky monkey, but it's um. It's still not bad to have in your kit, I feel. I, I still do like it. Um, and to be honest, uh, they're not that much heavier. This one is heavier, but not bad. God, this thing is just, it feels like, like a communist block weapon, like something that the Russians would come up with. You just, when all this fails, you take it and you hit your enemy with it. You know, that kind of thing. Okay, so that will do it. Hopefully you yourself tried to upgrade the firmware for your X5105. 
If you did, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. And if you figured out how to get that pesky uh, Morse code decode to work, I'd love to hear about it. All right, I am Josh, KI6NAZ. I'd appreciate it if you checked out our social medias like Facebook and our wonderful Discord community. Uh, the links for all of them will be in the description. Check out hamtactical.com, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.